So here's the situation. Um, I'm in Johannesburg Airport in South Africa. I've been here for about six hours walking around doing absolutely nothing and I've got another seven hours to go because I've just found out that my flight has been delayed. So uh, I've got nothing to do for the next few hours but I've got a smile on my face because I've got a really exciting week ahead of me. I'm going to be going to the RWA show in Nuremberg in Germany. I'm going to be meeting up with Frederick Axelson from FX A Guns and Ted from Ted's Holdover and I've got a lot of exciting stuff lined up. Oh look, a pigeon. In an international airport, this is Africa. This trip far exceeded my expectations. It was a long journey, but man was it worth it. The shot show in Las Vegas was pretty cool, but this one definitely takes first place. In typical German style, everything was very well organized, and it was very cool to see such a wide variety of cultures all congregated at one venue. Right, so here's how this one is going to work. There's honestly so much stuff to see here. If I try and go into too much detail about everything, you'll be watching this video all day. So I'm going to walk around and if I see something that interests me, we'll stop. I'll talk about it very briefly and then we'll move on. That way we can cover more stuff and perhaps at a later stage, I can get my hands on, on some of these products and I can do proper reviews. But for now, we're just going to skim through things briefly. So let's get things started at the Ataman stand. Now I'll be honest, I was not expecting to like some of these guns as much as I did. Ataman isn't really a known brand in South Africa, so a lot of this was new to me. There were three guns in particular that really caught my eye. The first one being the M2 with the collapsible stock. Not only does this gun feel pretty well made, but it is very compact. With the stock folded up, this gun could probably fit in your backpack. The second one that caught my eye was their field target rifle. Now this is not something that I would personally be interested in, but it's been a very long time since I held something this comfortable and if it shoots well, it might very well have a place in the world of competition shooting. The last one from the Ataman stand and my personal favorite was the AP-16 pistol. Man, this thing just feels incredible to hold and it is absolutely packed with features. The grips can be swapped out, the cylinders and barrels can be swapped out and the side lever and magazine are so well integrated in the gun that you don't even think about them. Moving on through the halls and we'll make a quick stop at the Varrock stand. Now the HW100 has always been, in my opinion, one of the best PCPs ever made. And the HW110, which is the new addition to the Varrock family, is very similar to the classic HW100, but it's made of slightly cheaper materials to bring the price down. So if you're a Varrock fan, but you're on a tight budget, give the 110 a look. Next up is Air Arms. Now, I've already done a video of the new Galahad Bullpup at the SHOT Show a few months ago, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but there are one or two changes that Air Arms have made to the design, so I do want to run through those quickly. Number one, the edges of the cocking lever are going to be smoothed down a bit. Number two, you could see the air cylinders with a matte black finish instead of a polished one. Number three, the power knob is going to be extended so that it can be reached easier. And good news, it will feature positive clicks so that you can return to the same power settings every time. I think this is the most significant change. But lastly, the shroud diameter will be increased a bit and the gap between the shroud and cylinder reduced. All good changes in my opinion. Next, I popped in at Airgun Technology another company that I don't really know much about. Uh, I've heard plenty of talk about the Vulcan and it seems that Airgun Technology will be making a few minor changes to the design this year. Now the original Vulcan looks something like this and the new one looks like this. The changes aren't major but the butt pad is now adjustable and from what I understand the pressure gauge has been redesigned. There's now also a synthetic stock version of the Vulcan and an entirely new gun called the Vulcan Tactic, which is basically a semi bullpup. So the cheek piece is adjustable, the trigger linkage is improved, and there is a built-in accessory rail for a bar pod or a torch. So I kept on walking and a tiny little stand called Steinart Systems caught my eye. Here I discovered a bar pod that is quite possibly the nicest I've ever seen. It's called the Neopod, it is made of carbon fiber compound 
and as a result it is stronger than steel but half the weight of aluminium. It can attach to just about anything through various different adapters and it's pretty adjustable too. The only drawback is the price. This thing is even more expensive than the Atlas as far as I know and so it's probably out of most people's price range but it's available if you want it. Up next was the Hawk stand and I didn't spend much time here because there was only one new product and it was something that I probably would never use. It's the new Sidewinder and it has a really cool new feature that allows you to actually switch out one quarter MOA turrets with one eighth MOA turrets and even MRAD turrets. This is something that I really like but the reason I'd say I'd probably never use it is that it's only available in 10 to 50 by 60. For someone like me who's a hunter that is just way too big. If this scope was available in let's say 4 to 16 or 6 to 24, I would snap it up immediately. I stroll past some big names like Blaza and Sauer and we get to Daystate. Now for those of you who don't know already, Daystate have a new bullpup out called the Renegade. I'm not going to spend much time on this one because it is almost identical to the Pulsar. The big difference is that while the Pulsar was an entirely electronic rifle, the Renegade is a mechanical electronic hybrid. The hammer and spring and valve are all mechanical but the trigger is electronic. So the Renegade will be a little cheaper than the Pulsar but does still have some serious technology in it. And then right next to the Daystat stand I found MTC and there were some really interesting new scopes on display. Uh, many of you will know the MTC Viper and Mamba scopes, both of which I have used before on this channel, and these are essentially upgraded versions of those scopes. The Viper Pro is unique because of its turrets. They work on a gear system, which means that when you turn the turrets, the yellow tape rotates as well, showing you different units. In other words, you can actually download software, print out your own turret tape with yard markings, fit the tape to the scope, and actually dial to the correct yardage instead of having to do the math in your head. The Mamba Pro is less impressive, but it is something to look at if you want a much lighter scope without the chunky turrets. Now this is where things get interesting because just around the corner we have Optizan, and as some of you know, Optizan and MTC used to kind of be the same company a few years ago. They actually co-designed the Viper and Mamba scopes. So when these companies went their separate ways, they obviously wanted to both build on the very successful Mamba and Viper scopes. And while MTC got all fancy with the turrets, it seems Optizan have taken a slightly different approach. The Optizan EVX F1 is really a back to basic scope. The reticle is simple, yet very effective. The turrets are mill turrets, which means that they're in the same units as the reticle, which is amazingly good news. And this is actually a first focal plane scope, which means that no matter what magnification you set at, the spaces between the mill markings are always going to be the same. This aside, Optizan has actually told me that they have upgraded their glass to improve the scope's field of view and eye relief. Needless to say, this is definitely a scope for the future, and as far as I know, it's coming in at a pretty good price as well. Now, on to what was without doubt the most impressive air gun stand at the whole show, FX. Man, you only need to take one glance at that beautiful display rack to figure out why the stand was attracting so much attention. And it was great to see the owner of the company, Frederick Axelson, getting so involved with the visitors at the stand. It's not often that you get the owner of a company that is also the mastermind behind the products and it's really refreshing to see. Now there was a new product from FX called the Streamline that I actually filmed a separate video with and I'll put the link to that at the end of this video but in this one I want to talk about the shroud options on the Impact. Now as some of you may know the Impact features a telescopic shroud which allows you to keep the gun short and compact right up until the time you need to take your shot. This is a fantastic design, but for those who want something a little more permanent, a fixed shroud system is now available. And this is great because that large silence on the end is actually made of a whole lot of rings that can be removed or added depending on how long you want the gun to be. Definitely something to look at if you are a proud impact owner like myself. 
And finally, we get to what I thought was the most interesting new air gun at the entire show, the Edgun Leshy. Now, I'll be honest, when I rocked up at the Edgun stand, I was expecting to spend most of my time looking at the new Matador and the Lelia, but the moment this little guy caught my eye, I fell in love and I totally forgot about the other guns. It's difficult to explain what I like about this gun, but it's just one of those things that you pick up and you just don't want to put down. This is a really unique gun in that the air cylinder is directly behind the barrel, which means the hammer actually strikes backwards and the air is released from right behind the pellet. The gun cocks by breaking in two, which exposes the back of the barrel. From there, the pellet can be inserted and the gun becomes ready to fire. Now, this is definitely not a gun for everyone, but someone who wants to go camping, hiking, canoeing, or just needs a tiny, light, robust gun, very few can beat this. Furthermore, the barrels are actually interchangeable, so you can get this in 177, 20, 22, or 25. And this thing feels so solid that if you don't feel like shooting something, you could probably just clobber it to death. So that concludes another one from Germany. I hope you found it interesting and informative, and hopefully I can get my hands on some of these products and review them fairly soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.